In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn this website traffic data into a heat map matrix, where at a glance, you can see which days or times of the day are the busiest. We're going to go through it step by step together. I'm going to show you how you can do all of this without writing a single line of DAX code. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So heat maps is a type of visual that uses colors to make it easy for your users to see clusters or concentration of data. It could be to show how, let's say, which days are the busiest days in the office, or maybe to see which months in a year are the hottest. And since heat map is inherently just tables, it's pretty easy for us to reproduce this in Power BI without really needing any custom visuals. So here's a table containing website traffic for a fictional company. I used the website called Makaroo.com to generate this data. And this is meant to represent a line for each visitor for our website, the dates that they uh, logged in, as well as the time that they visited our site. So we're gonna use this data to create our heat map matrix. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to import this data into Power BI. So we're gonna go uh, get data and select text or CSV, because I know that this file is a CSV file. Hit open which will open up a Power Query for us. Here we go. This is the preview of the data. We'll just hit transform and you'll see Power Query. So let's clean up this data first of all uh, by promoting the first rows as headers. And then I'm going to highlight everything, control A, transform, and then detect data type that will just convert all of our columns to the right data type that they need to be. So for us to be able to show the heat map matrix, we need to clean up this data a little bit. So first of all, we'll need to convert the times into the standard hours so we can group them by hour. And for that, we'll just need to simply hit the time column and then under transform ribbon, click time here. And then under hour, we'll just convert these hours into start of hour. That just removes the minutes on all of the times that we have here so that they're all set to individual hours. And in our heat map, what we want to show is the day of the weeks, which are like Mondays to Sundays. And for us to do that, it's actually pretty simple from here too. So we'll select the date column. Under add column ribbon, we will have this option dates. So we'll add a new column under day, a name of day. That will give us the name of the, the, the weekdays, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, which is what we want to show in our matrix. This also adds under day is the day of week. It just converts these day of names into numbers. And that's pretty important to make sure that the weeks are sorted chronologically as opposed to alphabetically. And I'll show you how to do that later. So now let's leave this as it is right now. And let's hit close and apply to load this data into our data model. Let's give it a few seconds. So now you'll see that the data that we imported is now on the right hand side. All we have to do is uh, drag a few things into our page here. So we'll drag in the time. We'll drag in the ID. We'll just make sure that the ID is counted, not summed. So that we're counting the number of people as opposed to summing up their IDs. And then we will add the day name. And then we'll convert this into a matrix like this. So you can see that the day name is sorted alphabetically. So we'll just change that quickly by selecting day name from here. Sort by column, and then we'll sort it by the day of week. This is the numbers to make sure that our days are sorted chronologically from Monday to Sunday. And then from here, we can start creating our heat map. So on the format your visuals, let's first remove the totals. Since we don't really need it for this demo purposes anyway, make it slightly smaller. And then under the cell elements option on the bottom here, we'll use the count of ID series. And we're going to enable both background color and font color. Now by default, both these two conditional formatting options uses blue. So they're using the same gradients. 
which basically makes the numbers invisible in those cells, but they're not really invisible. They're just the same colors. So let's say if you want to change the colors for your heat map, you click the conditional formatting icon here. Just make sure that you change the colors to the same gradients on both of these uh, options. So you can see here, for example, they are not the same color anymore. So if we change the font color to the same color as the background color, it should show as almost invisible and we will have our heat map as we needed it. So now with a few simple changes, you have been able to create a heat map pretty easily without using any DAX code. And just seeing this heat map, you can see which time of the days are the busiest within your website uh, traffic. So around 4 p.m. onwards is when it's the busiest. But why don't we try to add a few more dimensions here to make this heat map even more useful. So let's go back to our query and let's add a few more dimensions to slice this data by. So I'm gonna select data dates again and then add column. We're gonna add a few things here. So we're gonna add the day, which is the, the, the day here. We're gonna add select dates again. We're gonna add month, which is the name of the month. And then we're gonna add another column called uh, month. And this is just to sort again, the same way that we did for the week, sort the months in chronological order and not alphabetically. So we're gonna leave it like that for now. Hit close and apply. And firstly, let's add these month names, right? So uh, we're gonna convert this month name to make sure it's sorted by our month numbers. So that you can see it's January to December. We're gonna convert this into a filter and change it to a horizontal filter like this. So that way you're able to, at least your users will be able to toggle which month they want to see in the heat map. So as they select, let's say January, February, they will have uh, different views of the heat map. And the results look a little bit odd. That's because it's fake data. But uh, for now, you basically are able to kind of slice and dice it by month if you wanted to. Now, let's say we wanted to see which days of the month are the busiest, not the time. We can try to recreate another heat map for that. So let's say, let's add a day. I'm going to change it into a table here. ID. And again, don't summarize. Well, actually, no, we'll count it. Uh, the day we will not summarize because we want a day for each row. And then we'll add, uh, let's say, the day of week. So day name. And then we'll convert this into a matrix. So now I'm going to make some space because we have quite a few days in a month. We'll remove the totals again, just because we don't need it. And then now we'll simply add some formatting here. So again, under cell elements, enable background color and font color. So now you're able to see not just which days in a month are the busiest, but also what time of the day is the busiest with the horizontal slicer on the top. You're even able to see for a single month, which days are the busiest along with which time of the day is the busiest. And the great thing about this solution is that, as you can see, we only use drag and drop features without writing a single line of code, which makes this implementation infinitely easier, especially if you're just starting out with Power BI. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to show and create your own heat map matrix without using any code or custom visuals in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't. So I'm going to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked the video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.